Hey guys, I'm glad you're here. So I have been seeing a lot of really satisfying videos lately, particularly on TikTok, about doing a whole bunch of spring cleaning and that is definitely something I wanted to do this year. I think the last time I did a really thorough spring clean was like two or three years ago, so it's time. Now, because I have a full-time job, all the clips that you see of me cleaning were taken after a full day's work at home. So that is why I look like a particularly scruffy hamster in most of these. However, enjoy the productive procrastination of watching someone else clean. Let's go. I started with one of my least favorite tasks, scrubbing out the microwave. As you can see, it was in pretty rough shape. I had warmed up some oatmeal for breakfast that morning, which tends to splatter and stick to the ceiling of the microwave, and it then just sticks and turns into concrete. So this took a decent amount of scrubbing. I also wiped down the outside of the microwave so there weren't any fingerprints or smudges. Next up was cleaning the stove. And I think it's pretty clear that this was desperately needed. There was a sad stray pasta noodle and just all of the crumbs and spills that come from about a week of really heavy use. I took the grills off and got right to scrubbing. We tend to make most of our meals at home, so this stove definitely gets a ton of use. And to be honest, it's usually my husband who ends up cleaning it. He definitely appreciated that I was the one taking care of it this time. I made sure to give it a super thorough clean, and I can't believe the night and day difference this made. The entire kitchen felt so much cleaner just from doing this one thing. Look, you can actually see a reflection now. I put the grills back on and then was putting my kettle back on the stove and I knew I just had to clean her too. You can see all of this buildup on the copper. It tends to develop a patina after a little bit. I don't tend to polish this kettle as often as I probably should. It's a long process that involves a lot of elbow grease and honestly, it's just not something that makes it to the top of my to-do list that often. This sped up video doesn't show you the actual 40 minutes I spent scrubbing this baby clean but it's so gratifying to see that pink metal start shining through once it's clean. This kettle was actually a vintage find through Etsy, and I loved it so much that I purchased it immediately. I make my morning tea in it every single day, and I can't tell you how happy it makes me to now see it sitting on the stove, all pink and shiny and clean.
mean, come on, look how beautiful. Next, I wanted to tackle the room where I spend most of my time. This is, unfortunately, what my desk looks like most of the time. There's a bunch of stuff piled here in the corner. My work laptop sits in the middle. Most of this stuff hasn't had a thorough clean in at least months. And yeah, I do a lot of snacking up here. I also noticed that for the amount of time I spend touching my keyboard and mouse, I really don't clean either of those often enough. There was also this weird dark blue smudgy stuff across the front of my desk. I still have no idea what this was. But first things first. I did a thorough clean of both my keyboard and mouse. and then I plugged both of those in to charge. I installed a bunch of updates that my work laptop had been begging me for, and then while it was restarting, I gave it a really thorough wipe down as well. Next, I tried to get that weird smudgy stuff off the front. As you can tell, I went over it a lot with cleaner and this rag, but it did not want to budge. I ended up using my fingernail to scrape off as much as I could before going back over it again with the cleaner. And that seemed to work. Next, I moved everything off my desk, all those piles of stuff. I even lifted off my desk mat and I did a really thorough clean. Then I put my desk mat back on and cleaned and conditioned it with some leather cleaner. My keyboard and mouse were all charged up, so I put them back on my desk.
and also added back on all of the things that I actually use. All right, we're back in the kitchen again. Our fridge came with these really annoying, super sticky labels that absolutely refused to come off. But with a plastic dish scraper, some goo gone, and a trusty rag, I managed to get this looking brand new. Then I noticed that the rest of the fridge could use some love too. The refrigerator is a high traffic area for us, so there were fingerprints, smudges, dust, somehow, but with a really thorough disinfecting, it's ready for more heavy use. Then I tackled the washing machine, which is actually in our kitchen. I'd noticed some lint starting to build up on that clear door, so I scrubbed at it until it gave in. While cleaning, I noticed that the front drainage holes for the machine had been clogged with some lint and hair. It was definitely gross, but I cleaned it all out. I also scrubbed out the drum and then used one of these washing machine cleaning tablets to do a really good cleaning cycle. Now that the washer's clean, let's put it to use. These are my and my husband's winter coats. And I won't lie to you, these haven't been washed in years. But our freshly cleaned washer had them looking like new in no time. Finally, I also grabbed all of my makeup brushes from the bathroom and used a solid brush cleaner to get those squeaky clean. I used to be really good at washing these every week, but since I rarely wear makeup now, i found that that habit has been slipping. But now, I'm all set. All right, those are all of the main spring cleaning items that I did this year. And this is, of course, on top of all my regular weekly cleaning, just so you know. But thank you so much for keeping me company while I was doing all this. As usual, like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you loved it and wanna see more like it. And thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.